Hey guys, I've got my latest project. It's bee themed and it's looking really sharp and I can't wait to show it to you. So, Ta -da! what you think? Boy, have I got a lot to tell you. Wow. Now this one was a project. I worked on it all day yesterday and practically a good portion of today because I had a lot of other things that I had to do around here and I still have house chores. But you know how it is, ladies. Sometimes you just got to put those chores away for a little bit. Well, let me go ahead and get started and explain to you what I did, okay? Now this is my three-tiered uh, B tray. And when I had gone shopping at Dollar Tree that one time that I came back with a whole bunch of goodies, I had gotten these really nice um, hexagonal little chalkboards. So what I did is that I took the ones that were um, unpainted on the edges with the black chalkboard because they did have some that had the white in the center. But I didn't want those. I wanted these because of the rough texture that they had so it would be easier to paint so I painted the insides of them to look like it was spilled honey or to give you the illusion that there's honey there and I went ahead and I painted all the edges and all the backs of all uh, five pieces and then I um, took those trays and I glued with uh, E6000 three of them together to form the second tier. And then I used the last one up at the top. Now to put them all together, I had gotten myself some of those wonderful candle holders. And I have been using these for years, but for the past two years, I had not been able to go to the store, so I didn't get any. So what I did is something that I had done to other candlestick uh, holders before was to glitter the, the bottoms of each one underneath. So what I did is that I took um, two types of glitter and I used Mod Podge. So I Mod Podge the underside of the, candles, the candlestick holder. And then I glittered it up with some yellow glitters and some iridescent glitters. But the funny thing was that with these iridescent glitters, and this is, you know, it's kind of hard to find, you know, solid colored glitters, or at least maybe I'm not looking in the right place or something, but the iridescent ones ended up looking kind of green. And, and, um, uh, I had painted the underside black to bring out the yellow, you know, that I had um, glued under there, but it didn't turn out that way. They turned out kind of green looking, but you know what? I still liked them because like I told my husband, they still look like um, they're part of nature, you know, with the bees and flowers and everything. So I left, I, I, like, I ended up going ahead and using it because I had other, other uh, glass can holders I could have redone, but I decided, no, I'm going to stick to these because it'll add a bit of, of um, you know, something different, something more of a, a little bit of a wow factor because they really are beautiful. This is the one on the bottom. Oh, and let me say that this bottom tier has little feet. I had bought myself a little package of those little cubes, wooden cubes, that I hand painted and then I E6000 them onto the bottom tray to give it a lift and so that it'd be a little easier to hold onto and everything. And so that's what I did there. And here's the other um, candle holder. Now also at the very top of the candle holder, you see that it's yellow looking. Well, that's because I went in there with um, the glitter paints in gold and I first went in there and I put um, just a touch of that glitter gold paint in there to give it a kind of honeyed look 
But then I went back and I put an iridescent, uh, this other iridescent yellow that my son had gotten for me. And it pops like there's honey or something yellow in there. You know, I wanted to have a little bit of, of, of a different color. And luckily, it, you know, it held. But see, that one was not painted. So I don't know if the iridescent uh, glitter just didn't work with the black or I don't know what made them green but it just really brought out the green of the iridescent glitter but in any case I thought it was beautiful and I think the bottom one actually has let me see I think it's the bottom one I don't think you can really tell because it really is glittered up in there There's, there was actually a white big pearl from an old necklace that I had that I had stuck in there and um and it's just because, you know, I like to do things a little wacky sometimes and just add little things here and there. Adds a little bit to the mystery of things. And then the top one, you know, did the same thing with the glitter. And you can see it better of what I'm talking about, about the glitter looking green. But I really do like it. I think it actually added a different color to the whole thing so it all wouldn't be just black and yellow. You know, black and yellow. <laughs> so... Anyways, I thought that that color was really going to make everything pop more and I love it. So, at the very top, I actually used a very old candle holder that I had also gotten from Dollar Tree like a long time ago. And what I had done to it at one point, I had sanded it half red and half uh, sky blue using white sand. So I refound that little piece. I hadn't been doing anything with it whatsoever. And I repainted it to give it the striped look of, of the black, yellow, and black. And then I E6000 that on top of this top candle stick holder. And up here at the very top are my, sug my sugared flowers that I love to do. I... As I came up with this basically on my own and you know I hadn't been seeing a lot of YouTube or anything like that I mean I had seen YouTube's but not uh, videos but not about sugared flowers so I came up with this idea long ago and it's basically just to give it a different you know a more a more sugared look and I peppered them with black sand I don't know if you can with black sand so I took these little miniature carnations and I peppered them with black sand I mod podged them front back inside on top everything and then I sugared them with that especially iridescent clear uh, glitter that I love so much that I had only found one little tube of and you see how it looks sugared I wish this camera would focus but it gives it a more sugary effect and it's not iridescent I mean it says it's iridescent but it's it's not because you don't see a lot of colors you just see the clear or the white like it, it looks you can see by looking at the shiny parts right so I did that and inside as you can see all I have is a little piece of styrofoam that I glued down in the center to hold my flowers so they wouldn't fall over because they became a little heavy after I mod podged and sanded them and glittered them up and then I added all these bees that I had kept from Mother's Day I didn't do anything with these and as you can tell they're different from the ones that I did over there on the cake those were made out of the salt dough but with the same cutouts I made these and I changed up their look by doing their wings a little different by painting them up a little different and they're not perfect but they're adorable and they're busy busy little bees so I put several of them I even added one to one of the flowers up at the top and I wanted to have them scattered throughout the trays like mmm I smell something good look at that and what you're using my honey what I can't believe you're using my honey and 
I ended up using my hot glue gun, which I totally love and adore, and I'm so happy I invested in it. It was only $10 at Walmart, but it's one of those um, uh, hot and cold uh, temp, uh, you know, glue guns. And let me tell you, you have got to have one of those. They are fabulous, fabulous. And you can put glue on styrofoam and it won't melt through and... And all kinds of things with it and just go crazy and I just love it so much I do I love it so much and so I was able to you know make faux honey all the way around and I will turn it around in a bit let me just show you this real quick and I want to make it look like it was some sort of a honey fountain or you know something something cute right something fantasy ish and then I have the spilled honey, you know, traveling down the candlestick, you know, holder and down onto the tray, spilling over the top, falling onto, you know, the other side. I did not put any on the bottom, of course. It wouldn't make sense. And I added these little pieces of yellow faux, um crunchies or crumbles as I call them these are more like a like some chips that I just made out of paint and sand and I had a, a leftover from another project and I just ended up uh, you know cutting it out with some scissors because they held pretty good They're, they are brittle but they held pretty well and I was able to e6000 them down onto the three sides of you know where the three um, hexagonal pieces were glued glued down for a little design and then I made a lemon crumble cake I thought why not add some goodies to this tray and I couldn't show it to you unfinished without some goodies so this one took me a while to dry because I put a lot of you know uh, paint on top of it but it, it's a pretty simple little mini cake and it looks like it's got all honey well actually it's more like a honey cake right with honey my husband said to call them honey crumbles so there you go keeping with the theme because I've used the same uh, the same little crumbles on when I made my breads and I called it a lemon crumble or something like that. But on this particular little cake today, they're honey crumbles. And then I made two adorable cupcakes. And all this is, is that I had these two molds that I had made with a plaster of Paris and I uh, hand painted them black. And then I put two colors of yellow up at the top so that if anything peeked through you know it would still look good and then I ended up um, whipping up some um, spackling with some black and yellow into the white after I mixed up the yellow with the spackle first to make it yellow and then I went back and I added more of the mazy yellow and then some black and I just kind of messed with it a little bit and then just started putting it back into my into my piping bag and then I was able to pipe out this adorable cupcake which I sprinkled with the clear iridescent glitter and the little uh, bits of black sand and then I added that candy piece which is a faux honey candy now I'm going to turn this around or attempt to. Hopefully I don't knock off something or <laughs> or other. You'll know if something goes flying, right? So I see there's bees and honey dripping over the edges. And I'm trying to move it to where you see the back part. And this is the back. You know, with a big old drizzle of honey coming down and spilling onto that tear down look at that perfect little drop there mm -hmm. i wanted to show you guys i made this one way bigger you know made it a lot more yum yum 
And I added those chips that I was talking to you about earlier and that candy piece. And again, all I did was just add the iridescent glitter to make it look like sugar. Doesn't that look like sugar? See, this is why I like this glitter so much. Because it looks like sugar. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to find some more at Walmart. But I hate it when they change things, you know? It's bad enough you can't find anything when you go in there. And you have to walk for miles just to get something from one side of the store to the other. I wanted to touch base on some of the things, well, on something that I had already made before and shown y'all. Let me go back over here. The adorable bee cookie pops that I made. A while back these I made for Halloween uh, I believe last year and I basically just took the same pattern that I had used for the for the uh, salt dough these over there and I made these and then all I did was just add the patterns of polka dots and stripes. And each one of them uh, has, I think, let me see, I'm trying to remember if it has the opposite. I don't know if I can move it. Let me see. See, one side is striped and then the other side is polka dotted. So that no matter how you look at the little bouquet, you know, you see a pattern. And I had, you know, when I try to create stuff, I try to be different. You know, I try to do something that other people maybe have not done yet. And as far as I know, I have been the first for several things. And the cookie pops, the bee cookie pops, is one of the things that I think I am first with. And the um, painting of the pet bedding. Now... It might be possible that it might have been done a long time ago, but I don't think so. And also with the sugared flowers, you know, I had been sugaring up the flowers for a long time with glitter. And all of these ideas I had been doing for years before I even made my channel this year. So, I mean, my channel is just, what, a few weeks old now? And these were one of the things that I had made for Halloween. To have something you know cute and as a faux goodie on display here in the dining room so i'm very proud of these little cookie pops because i've seen a lot of cake pops but i had not seen any cookie pops and they do have a filling in the center which is like a tannish look almost like a peanut buttery color and then i sugared them up big time also as well with that same glitter guys to give it a sugary effect all the way around and all over the cookie everything I like everything that I do I like to go a step beyond I'm just that way I'm an artist artists tend to do stuff like that <laughs> I like to think outside the box I like to be different I like to be unique I like to show people what I'm made of I try to do the best that I can, you know, and have fun with it. That's just the way I am. Everybody does their thing, right? If y'all ever use any of my ideas, please give me credit. I would appreciate that very much. Because I take pride in what I do. And down here I have the lemon chocolate chip or chocolate pieces that I had made earlier as well I was I had planned on using these for something but I think they're just gonna stay here I kind of like them where they are now I do plan on doing painting videos because I am an artist and I wanted to show you guys just a few right here is a honey 
the inspired painting that I did last year and I used a uh, bubble wrap to make the pattern it's abstract but you get the idea and then I did paint some of the honeycombs by hand and, and you know added the flower and the little hive and a bunch of flowers down at the bottom with some bees I just love to paint I adore it I've been doing it for about 30 years or so now and here's another painting that I have I was doing this even before the fluid acrylic thing went crazy which is now called pouring on YouTube I was already doing my geodes and using sands and stones and glitters and puff paints and oh name it I pretty much have used it and then I of course hand painted my starfish and the greenery in there and I did paint the sand and I added sand to it too for texture paint the shell and I varnish all of my artwork to seal it I have never sold anything that wasn't protected because the, you know paintings are delicate stuff you know you can easily get some droplets of something or other onto it and it's ruined you know so I like to seal my stuff these up here are my Alice in Wonderland uh, frames that I showed you guys in the very beginning when I first got my channel and of course all of the roses are made and the hearts are made out of plaster of Paris and hand painted and sealed with glitter paints as well as all the little bees that I have all over my walls Here I have my hydrangea painting that I did. And I just love detailed work. I like to put a lot of details into my stuff. And I guess that's why it goes to my crafting as well. This is a painting that I did basically just with a palette knife and one brush. Basically more palette knife than brush. And that kind of reminds me of Dune. How is Caladan? And this one also reminds me of Dune. Are you guys fans of Dune? I adore that movie. And my son says this one definitely reminds him of Dune. And then I did this one. And I don't know if you guys know what jujube plums are, but I believe they are from Japan. My grandmother was friends with an older lady that would travel with her sister and they would go to different countries. And she went to Japan and she brought back seeds and stuff and gave them to my grandmother to plant. And she did have a huge jujube plum tree behind her kitchen. And that's, that tree would give out these miniature apples. And I kid you not, they tasted like apples. I love them. They were so sweet and delicious. Of course, the bugs were always trying to get to them first. But my aunt and I used to handpick just quadrillions of these little miniature apples. So when I did this painting, I wanted to have a bouquet of those little apple branches. And they looked just like that. And they were so wonderful. They tasted like miniature apples. And then these up here at the top are um, dried. Um, I'm trying to remember. Babe, what's the name of the cactus that Michael likes? I'm trying to ask my husband. Was, huh? What? Oh, yeah. The yucca plants. I always forget what they're called. But we do have some yucca plants on our property, but they've never bloomed. And these blooms you find in the, you know, in the wilderness parts. 
and you usually see them sticking out looking like that all dried out and they're hard and they hold their seeds and then they drop their seeds and then there's a little wine bottle that I painted and it says jujube you know it's like a jujube plum wine called reverie and I thought that was adequate for it reminding me so much of my grandmother and my grandpa making the the hole around the tree to gather rain or to put lots of water in it so it would give out a lot of fruit and over here I have this one this one came out in the newspaper along with some of my other works I think I think those that I just showed you except for the two at the bottom they're the more recent ones but the jujube plum and the hydrangeas came out in a um, library exhibit that I did this is my Louisiana painting as you can tell I love details this one down here is my husband's stippling work he does beautiful work but his Duchenne muscular dystrophy makes it a little hard for him to be able to do this kind of stuff you know often and but when he does do something it's beautiful and had to do the lines so I had to put them here because they go with the lemon theme as well and then of course I just have you know my Alice in Wonderland goodies here on this little tear tray my rose you know that I made out of a mold and I have pearls in here this is my grandmother's butter dish she gave it to me this was her mom's butter dish I believe my great grandmother's and a cute little cup that my son got me with a faux tulip cookie well guys I guess I better get going otherwise I might run out of room again it was great visiting with you guys I hope that you enjoyed my chit chat and I hope to see you guys again very soon with another project y'all take care keep on creating never stop there's always something out there that can inspire you to do something great and you can be sure that i'm gonna keep on doing my thing as well this is brace ways until next time guys y'all take care out there be very careful okay talk to y'all later bye bye